y'all um i'm hype i'm hype <laughs> it took a while but um i finally found a marine intake in my area um for the uh, 5750 um vortex motor uh motor that's in a kodiak Cody, basically because i'm trying to get the uh pretty much the most bang for buck whatever bolt on i can get as i'm setting the truck up for the future um getting this intake was major now the it's the marine intake off of the um the maracruiser uh the maracruiser boat motors um why they came with a way better design than what the vehicles came with no idea but um uh yeah finally found one a guy um, i'm on the road uh, probably still gonna I got, i'm probably like an hour out still um gonna go drive to get it because there's one guy local that has had one for a while, but that man was not budging. That man, 900, no less for that intake. And when I go into the like the GMT 400 forums and everything like that, talking to people in their areas in like freaking Oklahoma and Iowa, they're like, oh yeah, you know, we find them for like 400 bucks, you know, 300, 300 bucks. And I'm like, what? Like that, that is not how that works in my area. But anyway, um, I finally found a guy that got it. Um, gonna lay eyes on it. We'll see once we get there what it looks like. Um, and hopefully uh you know it's pretty solid from what he said it's in good working condition all injectors are there everything for the intake is there um i'm just going to clean it up and see what i have to do in order to make it fit onto my motor i mean truthfully the main reason why these are so great is because there's usually minimal modification but there are slight differences from the boat to the uh uh car so you know we'll see once we get our hands on it Folks, it, it worked out pretty good, man. Uh, got the uh, intake. Uh, dude was cool. He uh, actually was works at a, I want to say a marine, what's that called? Uh, a marine repair shop. They repair uh, boats and whatnot. It was on a dock. Uh, and I, that kind of explains it because, you know, he wasn't trying to get crazy money for it. He wanted $450. Uh, we got it for like $300. Bucks, and um, here it is. So it is complete, like you said. We got the uh, injectors, and uh, other than the injectors, uh, fuel rails, it's pretty much complete. There's a couple of sensors, and truthfully, I'm not even sure if I'll use those because I'll use the ones from the truck. But uh, a little bit of rust here, but once I clean up the rust here, touch up the paint in those particular areas, I don't really have to paint the rest of this. It's already pretty good. I'll clean it up with some, uh, some Dawn dish liquid and some water and I'll tell you, probably take the fuel rails off, make those kind of like a like a silver, and leave everything else black. So uh, that's probably my plan of what I'm gonna do to it. So I mean, we'll get more detail with it once I get it back to the house, and you know, we look over it and everything, and uh, kind of go from there. All right, so here it is back at the house. Uh, I cleaned it up some, but then I left it outside. So as you can see, the rain got to it, rested it up in certain areas. But um, just wanted to kind of give you guys the overlook um, and what's different. So uh, you're going to see it looks like a flat, almost like a provision there for where it used to be on our vortex on the trucks. Um, there is um, a tube here. And from what I did, from what research I did do, I saw that the tube that goes from here to the water pump, it's kind of like a, I want to say like a bypass so you can get heat faster in your car without waiting for the engine to heat up. So you're gonna lose that, not a big deal for me, don't care. Um, <clears throat> and also on the back here, you still have the plug for the sensor that's supposed to go into the top of the manifold that's in our factory cars. And you also have the PCV, which is here. And you have this flat surface here, which is what I'm about to do, what most people do. You drill and tap it so that way you have a line to go to your brake booster. Um, so other than that, um, 
going to be using the fuel rails, pretty much everything that's already on here. I already have the connectors, got those off Amazon. And the way that the fuel lines hook up, it's pretty much like an LS style uh, quick disconnect, which um, I'm going to kind of make use of these when going into my AN line to go back to the tank. So um, the plan right now is to uh, take the, uh, pretty much take it apart, take off the throttle body because I have a BBK that's going on here that I have to um, uh, clearance the top of it a bit. And also gonna take off the fuel rails and take the whole entire top of the manifold off because I'm going to get this whole bottom portion, the cast iron base, we're gonna get that powder coated gloss black. I'm also going to get the top of the intake powder coated to match my vehicle. We know a guy named Ryan, he did it in his, um, and his B-body looks beautiful. So hopefully it all works out that way, but we'll see. All right, so first things first, uh, I got this kit um, off of Amazon and uh, it's the drill and tap. Um, I'm not sure if it's showing up clear on camera, but um, it's the drill and tap set uh, that you would use for um, uh, drilling into the top for the brake booster. And this, I decided to go with the right angle one. Um, hopefully I don't regret it. I mean, if I do, then I'll just buy another one that's straight up vertical and twist it in. But um, first off, we're going to drill into the top right here and um, make the provision for it and then go from there. Okay, so holes drilled into it all the way through. Uh, it's not gonna give you much resistance. It's kind of like butter because the top, um, the top of the intake is aluminum. So went through pretty easy. Um, normally, let's just say, uh, if you were doing this like on the car or something, I would definitely take the top off. And um, I mean, you normally do this before you do the swap, but um, normally you would take it apart and then you just do this separately. So you'd avoid shavings or anything like that. But I figured I'd just give it a try anyway because this whole thing is coming apart. It's getting completely cleaned out. It's getting powder coated, the whole nine. So uh, now the point, the goal is to take this thing here and um, start to run the tap in here. And once the tap's complete, then test fit this. And then once that's in there, um, we'll be gold. All right, so a quick show was happening. I threaded uh, this hole. I did not go all the way down. I mean, I got kind of pretty close, but I didn't need to because um, camera may show how deep down, you can see the threads that weren't touched up top, but how deep down it went. And, and um, this here is not that deep. So the issue I'm running into is maybe you're gonna have to shave this down or just suck it up and just go with an upright fitting and try to find like a 90 degree rubber boot because trying to put it in, it does thread, which I'm happy about, but I just run into this nipple here, which is a vacuum line. So that sucks. Um, yeah, so I'll figure it out. Okay, so um, we got the throttle body off, no big deal. Um, just the three bolts and that gasket actually looks like it might still be good, but you know, we'll see. Um, the goal is, I mean, it would be nice. I don't know why it's so hard to find. I've been trying, but it's being really difficult. There is a difference in the uh, upper intake gasket because on ours, we have um, provisions. Uh, one of them being the EGR. Um, it kind of sits in a different spot on this side and it comes out a bit. So the gasket makeup is different. Um, so I would like to get a um, new gasket for the upper intake. Uh, also, um, now that I got the fuel rails off, got a little fuel over on that side of some still in the rail. Um, and this is pulled off of a running boat. So um, I have all the injectors, injectors work um, for what I was told, we'll see. And I just wanna replace the O-rings on the bottom, the top, um, whatever filters I can get to, it's not too difficult, change them out and uh, slap these bad boys back on. But uh, with those removed, um, now it looks like all that's left is these bolts here. And I'm actually missing one in the back. Uh, where is that? I'm missing one in the back here, kind of sucks. Um, just gotta find a good replacement uh, and go from there. But now I'm just gonna take these bolts off, take the upper off so that way I can bolt on the BBK and start to trim uh, the outside for the 
bigger bore. Okay, so uh, I decided to trim it down. Uh, just trim down the uh, MPT fitting. So that way it will now clear. Boom. Threads in, gets tight, beautiful. But it now clears this nipple here. Um, of course, I'll just you know keep spinning or whatever, or start to thread different, so it'll point a different direction. But um, anyway, so now that that's taken care of, and I even have a spare one of these that I trimmed down. Uh, the next thing, here's the some more meat and potatoes. So we got the BBK um, throttle body, and here it is. And I mean, you can either um, even when you set the throttle body on, rather you are doing this to a marine intake or rather you're doing it to your regular intake already on your uh, Vortec. Um, you'll see that it does have to be clearanced. This lip around here has to go. So I just put the spacer on that comes with it, tightened it down, and next is to take this Sharpie, draw in, and once I do that, take the plate back off, and then I will take my handy dandy uh, rotary tool here and clearance it out until it's all clear. A little more time consuming than I thought because uh, using this um, tungsten uh, Dremel bit, uh, this tip is kind of the wrong one only because I mean it works good but only for a short period of time because the, the aluminum is so soft it gets caked up on the actual bit. So, uh, but anyway, I got it uh, a lot closer than it was um, and you don't want to overdo it with this. Uh, you don't want to go too big. so. I'm thinking I'm good right here. Just gonna leave it as that. Majority, I would say 90 or a little more percent of it is removed. Um, so the one thing that I was kind of curious about is with this spacer here, not even sure if they expect you to use it, but if you look on the manifold itself, there's a hole here and that's supposed to be where that lines up. So it goes on top and lines up with that. Now, thing is, if you were to um, put this on, it blocks that off. So, interesting. That's the first part. Second part is this spacer is tapered. It's like um, this top side has a bigger opening than the bottom side. The bottom side actually matches up to the bottom hole of this perfectly. So if you flipped it over and I was to take the tapered end and go on top, it matches up perfectly. But if I flip it this way, the bigger side, there's like additional meat on the edges. Not sure what that's about, but um, I'm going to try not to run the spacer. Um, I'm going to just try to run just a throttle body. The only thing I'm seeing that might pose some sort of an issue is um this is really close over here so i mean as it spins it's not really going to touch this while it rotates but i'm going to have whole fuel injection rails here so not sure if that's gonna be a problem but we'll see all right so here's the aftermath uh all the aluminum shards just playing cleanup and uh this is everything that's going over the powder coat man uh got my top got the uh inside clearanced out ported um had my fitting in threaded ready to go and um got the bottom part uh cleared out so now um drop these off at powder coat along with these two brackets and uh, these are the front um uh accessory brackets but uh one two and three is getting gloss blacked and hopefully god willing um they're not going to give me a hard time but this one is going to get a uh, color match to my truck or at least as close as I can get it. So that's the next move. This is a Wizard Productions.